Let's pray. Father, thank you for what you're saying right now to your people, to the church, to the house, to the houses. Thank you for the grace of heaven coming upon your elect. Thank you, Lord, yes. Lord, you're going to raise up armies of people that are serious, very serious about serving you, about working for the advancement of the kingdom. They're going to be the most organized, the most intense, the most brilliant people that we've ever seen thus far in our life. It's going to be an army that's going to move in rank and order, like you said in Joshua, like you said in uh, Joel, like you spoke about even in the armies of Israel, how great they did things. People that have the faith of David, the courage of a David, but also the protege status and receptive status of a Jonathan. And even the, like the three that went through the enemy camp to get David some water when he was thirsty, they risked their own lives and they got back safely because they had to have wisdom. And the Lord is going to begin to raise up people like that in this season, that they're going to get things done. They're not going to look right or left. They're not going to be all emotional and crazy like where they came from. They're going to check their baggage outside the door before they come in. So only a strong person can do that. Only a person with sight can do that. Only a person that can see can do something like that. You have to see the picture. And it's not the time to look at things from your perspective, your perception, and then you view everything based on your own view. It's time for people to adapt themselves and come up to a higher level, to really serve God selflessly, even without, without their own agendas, People that can hear God and work for his agenda and leave all the other stuff alone and outside. That's going to happen. It's necessary and it's mandatory for the movement of the kingdom to go forward. Now, Father, I thank you that you're touching people with brilliance. You're going to touch people with the anointing to see and to think and to dream and create and imagine what it is that you want. Not what we want all the time, because you already said you'll give us the desires of our heart. When our mind is stayed on you, you'll show us your salvation and satisfy us with long life and all good things. And before that, Psalm 91 talked about protection from every evil force in this world. Father, we thank you that there's protection on us and around us and your people. And there's blessings personally. Job 36, 11, you said there are pleasures forevermore. At your right hand, we'll spend our days in prosperity and our life will be filled with pleasures. That's a promise to the one who serves you. Psalm 23 said, you set a table for us in the presence of enemies. So that's, that's already a given. That's already a guaranteed thing. But Lord, you're going to cause people to rise up to have your agenda. And when they don't see it properly, they're going to just be quiet and submitted and humble Enough to say, okay, I'm going to learn something now. I'm going to adapt myself. I'm going to mold myself. Let God mold me into this thing. Because there's so much going on that I don't even know about. I need to adapt myself to the big picture. A servant of God was writing me about a small detail to deal with someone, and I wrote them back. Please, let's reset the clock to where we're talking about the big picture of the ministry. 
as a partner of the ministry at planning events, let's do that. And leave the other stuff to another, you know, another thing. And they agreed. They said, yes, right. Yes to the big picture. When you have the vision of God at heart and in your mind, then all the other things of the human existence begin to rise up to serve that glory. You've got to understand that by faith. These things begin to take root and shape. They begin to manifest. They begin to, they, they materialize. Now in the kingdom, you have this. You have people that come to the church for a myriad of their own reasons for solutions. That's okay. Always will be okay. We always accommodate that by the love of God. You understand? Hello? No problem. But people that are being enlisted to serve is another thing. It's another thing. Someone could come and say, I don't care about the vision. I just want to get blessed. I, I knew a lady in New York. She said the most amazing thing. She was a beautiful woman, too. Oh, my. She was something else. I was like, what? You shall not I started speaking in tongues, you know. This is many years ago. We were in a meeting, and she just, I mean, she was just looking all like, well, I was like, no, I had to look the other way. And uh, she said, I don't care about souls. I just want to get blessed. So the people in the church are always preaching about winning souls. She says, I don't care about all that. I just want to get blessed. I thought about that. I laughed so hard. I thought she's very wrong, but I understand what she's saying. Lift your hands. So I'm like, you know, you want to get blessed, get blessed. After a while, God should visit you, and you understand that we have to win souls, and we need to advance the kingdom. So I pray, I, I, I don't know, we lost touch so many years ago. This was, by the way, this was a few minutes ago. This was like in the 90s, yeah? A few minutes ago, yeah? So I don't know whether, how she ever, you know, got on with her life, but, uh, you know, like, you, you need to, the church is to accommodate everybody. Everybody can come and, you know, Sit and enjoy. Hey, you want a miracle. It's here for you. Lift your hands. No, listen, don't, don't, get, don't get scared of this message now. I, I got to do, I got to bring it in duality. You, know? okay. you just want to get blessed. You want, you, like you want a mate or a spouse or you want a, a, a miracle of healing or you want some money to pay your bills or you, you want some good music to soothe your soul. No problem. No hakuna matata. No problem at all. Come in. It's nice. Enjoy yourself. At the level you want to enter, it's okay. Am I right? It's all right. Nobody's mad at anybody. Lift your hands. It's cool, man. Cool. No problem. Akuna Shida. No problem. But my God, there's people that God is putting his hand upon to bring them into, bring them into his service. That's another level. That's another, that's, a, that's another thing altogether. When that happens to you, you got to let your life be adjusted to the way God wants it to be. Ah, uh, it's very heavy. People marvel at the anointing that's upon my life. All the time they tell me. Just I'm getting messages in the phone uh, just a few minutes ago. They're here. It never ends. Man, you know, people saying all these great things. I'm like, you don't have any idea what it costs to walk in this thing. You don't even know. I, I was in Oklahoma City, and there was a pastor there, uh, the host of the conference, and uh, his name was Tom Jones. I can never forget his name because I think of the singer, Tom Jones. You know Tom Jones? The Scottish singer? It's not unusual to be loved by everyone. Da -da 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 -da. Why, why, why do I love? Da -da 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 -da. That's a horrible song. Burn that one. Break it. Tom Jones? No. But his name was Tom Jones. What's new, pussycat? Whoa. Remember that old song from the 60s? You weren't around then. Okay, praise the Lord. Or you were somewhere in the village. You never got the internet yet. You know? Sorry, we'll play catch up. That's a bad song. That's not a good song either. So I called out Tom Jones, and I said, Tom Jones, man of God, pastor. He came up, he lifted his hands, yes. I said, the Lord says you're going to be in the White House. Everybody went, huh, gasp, oh, you could hear. 
14 days later, he was sitting in the Lincoln Room having dinner with President George Bush. Lift your hands. The time when I told him that, he didn't even know that it was being arranged. He had no knowledge of it. It came up, that was on a Saturday. I preached in the church, the Sunday morning service for the church, because the conference went Thursday to Saturday. Uh, and then Sunday morning they asked me to stay over to speak for the morning service. And uh, that tape was lost, unfortunately. I preached about the dream, and I hope uh, God will give it back to me, but that tape was something happened to that tape. Very sad. The person that took it, oh, God help them. Maybe he won't. <laughs> Praise the Lord. In fact, I'm sure of it, but I won't go into that right now. And uh, he, he, he got the message, the news, like about by Wednesday of the next week, that there was this event going on, and he was going to be a special invited guest. And they vetted him and did all the process, and then got him in through the Secret Service and all that. He was there having dinner with the president 14 days later. I think it was on the Friday or Saturday, whatever the day I prophesied. It was exactly like two weeks later. Lift your hands. I was in Chuka, Kenya. You talk about the prophetic glory. I was in Chuka, Kenya, and I said, God is going to raise up people to make the roads here and to pave this town and to make it a real little nice, little nice town. And seven days after that prophecy, the president and the deputy president and others in the government, they usually don't travel together. Four choppers, four helicopters, executive helicopters landed near Chuka to go and to pronounce this new thing that would happen. And the president, they said he looked very troubled. He, his countenance looked very disturbed. And he made a statement. He said, you people here are just fighting about progress. It's wrong. I don't know what's wrong with you. He said, but this Chuka thing, I'm going to take it onto my own desk and I'm going to make sure it happens. They're telling me now that they've paved the roads, the roundabout that I talked about, the new hotels, the new buildings, the new things going up, it's all come to pass. It was created out of the prophetic word. Someone lift your hands and say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I was in Gong, you know Gong, uh, outside of Nairobi, and I was there. And the Lord said, Gong would become a little business center town, and also the roads would be done and all this. And the next week, the deputy president went there to invoke a new development project, right after I spoke that. How, do you, can, how can you imagine such a thing? I didn't know about it. I just heard it and spoke it as the Lord spoke to me. I was in Katundu South in Kenya at the president's, first president's home. You know Jomo's house? You know Jomo's house? I don't care if you do or you don't. I'm going moving right along. I'm not looking for a response right now. Praise the Lord. How many know Jomo's house? All right, Jomo's house. He's the first president of Kenya, his house. It's the, the state house number two now, right? In Gatundu. And the Lord had me prophesy that violence in the land would be curtailed and dealt with. And the Lord said there'll be a law enforcement miracle that would take place there in Campbell County in, in Kenya. Uh, and the Lord had it happen the next day. Lift your hands. The next day, the government raided the uh, police uh, headquarters, the police post there, whatever, the play, officers, and reassigned all the police bosses out and says, we're bringing new ones in and there's going to be peace in this land. And those that were committing murders, five of them were arrested. They found them and got them. It happened just like that. So at the meeting in Oklahoma City, when I was prophesying to Tom Jones about Pastor Tom Jones, not the singer Tom Jones, he's a pastor. He just has the same name. And uh, a lady came up to me and said, I love the anointing that's upon your life. I'd really like to have it. I turned and I looked at her without hesitation. I said, dear, it's very, very expensive. And you know what she did? She went like this. And I turned my head again and she was gone. A young man came up to T.D. Jakes and said, Bishop, would you bless me? I want to have a ministry like you have. 
How do I receive the anointing? Can you pray I receive the anointing that's upon your life? Bishop Jake said, sure, son, come here. Laid his hands on his head. Oh, let me take my right hand. Laid his hands on his head and started praying. He said, Lord, the time when they shut off my lights and I didn't know where I was going to pay anything. I had nothing and I had to stand and trust you. Give him that. The guy starts getting nervous. He said, Lord, the time that I preached in a church and I was soaked with sweat and then I went out and I was crying because I didn't have a car and then the rain was coming down on my head. So now I'm soaked with sweat, tears running down my face and the rain is falling on my head and I'm standing at the bus stop to take the bus to go home or wherever from, from preaching. And then a lady in the church that had the new, a new Cadillac, a rich lady in the church, drove by and hit a mud puddle. And the water all came up and splashed me from head to toe. Now I got rain, tears, sweat. Now I'm covered with mud. And I'm standing there shaking, wondering what's going on here. I'm preaching the gospel. Why? This is part of his process of getting raised up. He said, Lord, give him an experience like that. The guy jumped back and screamed, ah! What are you doing to me? I thought you were blessing me. Now you're cursing me. He said, no, I'm just talking about the process of what it takes to get walking when I'm walking. The guy jumped back and ran away. The one came to Jesus and says, what can I do to serve you? Jesus said, Give up all you have and follow me. The guy went away sad. Lift your hands. Couldn't handle it. Remember Jesus called people to the feast and they all made excuses. Some even, one even pervertedly said he had a cow. The Lord said, you have a cow. I guess that's really exciting. More than the feast that I'm inviting you to. Are you kidding? Are you, are you nuts? Then one said he had a wife as if God didn't know. Tell the wife to wait or come with you. But wait over there. Go have some coffee for a while. I got something to do. What is wrong with people these days? Even then, even then there was a problem. That was 2,000 years ago. Lift your hands. You, you got to get delivered from your own self and be a soldier in the army. You know, soldiers in the army, it doesn't matter if they cry. They have to wipe their tears. It doesn't matter if they feel their, their feelings have been hurt. When the drill sergeant starts yelling at them, it doesn't matter... If they don't want to wake up in the morning when they have to get up when the sun rises and get busy and start moving. I went to military school. It was horrible. I hated every blessed minute of it, but I learned a lot. I hated it. Oh, my God. I, oh, you don't even know. You have to wake up in the morning. You have to make your bed. You have to shine your shoes. You have to do all this rubbish. You have to go have a rolling call. I can't even remember all of them. You have to do all that. I'm like, what the heck is this about? Lift your hands. Praise the Lord. Can I sleep? What is this about? I called my parents. My parents had me arranged for me. I called my mom and dad. I said, what is this about? Please. They're like, no, just stay with it. You, it's good. I said, no, it isn't. But I learned something from that. Donald Trump went to the same. You know that Donald Trump, the president of the United States, went to the same military academy that I did. The New York Military Academy, NYMA we called it, N-Y-M-A. I've never talked about this in my whole life. Here we go. Last week I told stories about my cat. It's gone around the world. My cat's in heaven. People are writing me from America. Oh, poor Ruby. I'm telling you. We don't know how far this broadcast is going. I'm telling stuff about myself. I never told these things in my whole blessed life. Oh, your cat Ruby. Yeah, he talked and said, yeah, when he saw milk and he, and he loved the anointing. And he fell under the power when you laid hands on him. And now he's in heaven saying, shaking his head at what's going on in the earth. Ruby, uh, I'm getting messages like that in my phone all week. Imagine, from America and other places, from Europe, from England and America and Africa. Well, look, oh my God. So he, he thought it was good. Trump thought it was good because he learned something. He went to a great uh, finance school, the Wharton School of Business or whatever. He brags about that. He thought it was good. He sent his children there. His children are all multi-millionaires. Ivanka and Eric and Donald Jr., they are rich people. They do deals and make tens of millions and hundreds of millions of dollars in their own pockets. Lift their hands. Because of their dad brought them up correctly. 
I have some rude awakening for you, I and mean, this is not in my notes, but if you know the Holy Ghost is speaking here. You you gotta learn, you gotta adapt yourself. If you want to have great things, you gotta you gotta give yourself to it. You gotta give yourself to it. Now I'm glad I'm speaking along these lines because the Lord spoke about success. It's the season of success, 2020. He called the year of success. Someone lift your hands. Let's pray over that right now. It's the year of success. Somebody's writing me from London right now. Oh, my God. They want me to speak there in London. Okay, I'll talk to you later. God is, uh, is serious about success, but you have to get serious about receiving it. Number one, if you're too emotional, you short-circuit yourself. Don't be too emotional. Make a note of that. Number two, you need to adapt yourself to the program that you're getting involved in. You need to become very adaptive. You need to become like the chameleon, you know? You see the environment, you mirror the environment. You flow and fit in in the environment. Now, I, I understand that some people would think these things are kind of hard, you know? It's kind of strong, like is it like a military? Is it like a... A military outfit, assignment, kind of. The kingdom is. Some churches aren't, but the kingdom of God is. I'll tell you something. There's no servant of God that ever became anything great unless they went through a process of development and then adapted themselves to become the great servant that they became. All of them. Lester Sumrall, who I knew personally, great man of God. He, he went on a ship one time to China from San Francisco and he had $12 in his pocket. And he didn't even know if he was going to live or die, but the Lord said, go. And he was preaching at the New Hope Mission or whatever the church was called, Hope, New Hope or something like that. Big, the biggest church in San Francisco, this was in the 1920s, the 1930s or 40s, 30s, 40s, yeah, somewhere in there. And uh, maybe the 30s or the 40s, a long time ago. And he preached at the biggest church in San Francisco. And the pastor brought him to the port on the water and laughed at the young man and said, I guess you're going to go starve to death in China. Ha, ha, ha. And didn't even give him an offering. Lift your hands. Do you wonder how Lester Summerall became a great general, a great apostle in the kingdom? Can you imagine the pain? You just preached your heart out prayed for people, blessed them, and here's the pastor of the most prosperous, biggest church in the city, and he brings you to the port and throws you out of the car or the, whatever, and mocks you and says, go starve to death, enjoy yourself, and laughs at him and walks away. A pastor of the biggest church in the town, in San Francisco, California. Lester Sobral went, and he had to make the connection with the other apostle, Howard Carter. He had to find him, didn't know where to find him. Found him in Australia, I think. Maybe that's on the way to, is that on the way? It's, it's not, is it on the way? You think it's like, is it like on the way to the house, you know? I stop at the shop on the way to the house. This is like the, you're going around planet Earth by sea, not even by plane, on a ship. And if you read the story, by chance, he found, not by chance, by God's design, he ended up in the right place at the right time and met the man of God. They connected and went. And then when he was riding in Mongolia on the back of a, a yak or a mule or something like that, he, he got dysentery. Dysentery will kill you flat dead within days. You'll be dead. He said he was bleeding out of the, you know, out of the, uh, you know, from the intestines out. Your intestines begin to get torn up. He's bleeding while he's on this animal. Can you imagine being that sick? And he had to pray and God healed him. Then he got to Hong Kong. He got to Hong Kong. And he prayed, he prayed for a, a, a rich doctor that had cancer, a lady doctor, and the Lord healed her. Lift your hand. The Lord healed her, okay, he prayed for her. A young man anointed by God prayed for her, she got healed. 
And then she gave him a wad of rolled up thing, paper. He didn't know what it was. And she said, here, she stuck it in his hand hard, he put it in his pocket. When he got, he opened it up and counted, it was $3,100 bills. In that time, that was a lot of money. That might have, that might have been $30,000 cash now. $3,000 in $100 bills. Do you know what that did? It helped him to go all through Asia for his next mission. And he went as a missionary all to these places. And then the Lord sent him to the Philippines. And he prayed for this woman and cast a devil out of her. And it became a national sensation. It was like he, he had to leave after a while. It shows he's a real man of God because the people were worshiping him. They, he was becoming like a god. And the president gave him the stadium. He was preaching there. He couldn't get anybody saved. He stayed faithful. Then he cast the devil out of this woman. And they, they put it on the news. Her name was Clarita, I think. She was the one. He wrote a book about it, Bitten by Devils. Demons used to bite her and put bite marks into her flesh. And she'd be screaming, and people could see it, and they were filming it. It became a real phenomenon, so then the Lord says, go and cast the devil out of that woman. When he got there, all the media was there, the government was there, all the who's who's were there, in the prison place, because they were amazed at this woman. There was nobody there, and she's screaming, and she's being bitten, and then there are bite marks all over her. From where? I guess that would, I guess that would get someone's attention. Lift your hands. Praise the Lord. There's nobody there. They checked and saw. Nobody's there. She's in a jail cell. Completely insane. Completely, completely demon-possessed. And he goes and spends time. They did the video. He spent like the whole day and got her delivered. She was free. Now the president told him, or it was the, I think it was the mayor of Manila, told him, says, you know what? You're such a great man. We, our people would want to hear from you. Have the stadium as many days as you want. And we'll even advertise it for you. We'll send our, our military uh, guard to take care of you. We'll put you up in the best hotel and all that. And they did. And then it, now he couldn't get anybody saved. He just cast the devil out of this woman. And now 150,000 people came to the altar and got saved in Manila. Revival broke loose because a man was faithful. You know, he didn't say, Lord, I've been preaching here and these people aren't listening to me. And now you want me to go to this demon-possessed woman? Ha! Huh, what am I? What are you kidding me? Is this all I get to do? He, he just did what he, the Lord told him to do. That's faithfulness. That's being a soldier. Lift your hands. But some of us don't know about that. Most of the church culture around here is either like God's going to give you a miracle or else I'm going to tell you your name and address and the birth dates of your children. Just saw one video on that today. I was like, okay, that's nice. Interesting. Or some Bible story that means nothing really in relevance to your life in the current state. And then no, no demand for like, you know, a serious attitude to serve God. Lift your hands. Let's pray over this. Yeah, I know. Some people never hear anything like that at all. What a joke. What kind of people are you going to raise up? There are preachers here. Let me say it while I'm on it. They'll have a guest speaker come, and they give them nothing. They don't even say thank you. I thought, what kind of man is that in the pulpit? What kind of people is he going to raise up? They're all going to be a bunch of stingy losers. Even though they got their job and they dress up. You know some of these cornball churches, you know, they're like, Eh, eh. And they come in like the fashion show, look at me, and the pastor says something, they all go, eh, eh, eh. What are they becoming? Is it like a culture club? Yeah. Never teaching people how to give, how to serve, how to walk, how to do, how to produce ministry, how to, you know, become something great. Let's pray over this. Oh, God, this is good. The Lord is saying, what kingdom are you in anyway? The church culture club is not the kingdom of God, let me tell you right now. The CCC is not the KOG. The church culture club is not the KOG. 
The church can be in the kingdom, but is, I mean, do you really know about the kingdom? Years ago, I had people tell me in Nairobi, Kenya, I'm a student man, intelligent man, men that had studied the Bible, men that had been walking with God, you know, born again for a long time, yeah? They said, you know, prophet, uh, the kingdom, people don't even, know, don't even know what it is. Then Miles Monroe, bless his heart, he was my personal friend. Um, I don't like what happened to him. I couldn't, I couldn't deal with it for a long time. In fact, if I see his video a long time, I could. I still have a hard time watching it because I just don't understand what happened to him. All I can say is it's not going to happen to me. Lift your hands. That's all I can Or anybody that I know. Ed Dufresne, another great prophet, his plane exploded at 30,000 feet, and they found body parts on the ground, and that was the end of him. And he was 71 years old, and he said, I'm going to live. He said, I got 20 good years left. He was shouting. He was a great prophet. Why his plane exploded, I don't know. I could just say it's not going to happen to me. Praise the Lord. That's all I can say. I, some things are mysteries. You can't figure it out. But Miles Monroe came teaching about the kingdom of God. And people were like, wow, I never heard that before. Why not? Is it only Miles that can hear God to bring revel apostolic revelation like that? Where are the people here that are supposed to be doing that? Even a pastor should be touched by God to become deep enough that they can teach the people something. My God, I got so annoyed listening to people screaming so much in church, my brother. Screaming. Like making so much noise. And that's church. I hear a baby behind the wall. We're in Africa. Anywhere you look, you find a baby somewhere. People even sit in Java drinking coffee, breastfeeding their child. They don't care. Now in America, you can't do that. But here, it's like, all right, whatever, here it is. All right, I pray the baby's okay in Jesus' name. Boy, in Uganda, they got some cute babies. And those South Sudan ones, oh my God. They're specially painted by Jehovah with the pigmentation. They're painted. They're like, they got paint on them. I know, you know, I got this black suit on, you know. It's like, they're even, and they dark like that, kind of like. I love their skin color, man. It's very intriguing. And Uganda babies, you know, I was in the restaurant. They're so friendly. They come right up to you. They look at you. And they say, hi, what's your name? One little girl, she's about that high. She wasn't real small. She was, maybe she's about seven years old. And she ran up to me, and she, like, put her arm over my side of my chair. And I'm sitting there having the buffet lunch, you know. And, and she looks and she's smiling at me. She's rubbing her arm with me. She's going, what's your name? I said, Thomas. She said, Thomas. Oh, what's your name? She told me your name. She's like, ha, ha, ha. And she runs away. And all the kids are playing everywhere. They're so free. Beautiful. Nothing, nothing like a beautiful as an African baby. Lift your hands. Praise the Lord, somebody. So how did I get here? Somebody said to me, you must love Kenya. I said, do I? I looked at them like, hmm, are you sure? Yeah, of course, because I love God, because he loves you. That's why he sent me. It's God's business that I'm on. I, don't, I didn't choose to do any of this. I choose it willingly, because, you know, Isaiah 119 says, be willing and obedient. You need to go to the land. I'm willing and obedient. Anywhere if I wasn't, I just make that adjustment. It's okay. Lift your hands. Whatever God wants, you got to want it. Don't ever dislike anything God likes. Because he'll take his like away from you and you'll lose something. If you think God doesn't work by principles and systems, you, 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 you don't know him yet. So I was saying, all this noise going on, screaming and shouting, I said, I got to prophesy. I got to bring some order into this thing here. Praise the Lord. How many know the prophet, the governmental prophet has some order? It even becomes apostolic. It's even apostolic, you know? I got to set some order here in the church here. Now, look here. You can make some noise if you want. It's okay. But people need to be taught something that they can live a certain way, that they can learn the laws of success, the laws of finance, the laws of how to serve. You don't need to. They need some, some intelligent messages crammed into their, in, through their ears, down into their mind and their heart and their spirit, that they can rise up and walk and have a big life in the kingdom of God. Lift your hands. Let's pray over that. Come on, speak in tongues for a minute right now. Karab Roshikar, Ritu. Sulabot Shetaha. 
So you don't want to just, okay, keep praying, keep praying while I'm talking. You don't want to just be in the noise. And you just don't want to be in the dead religion. And you don't want to be in the, in the church culture club, the community center, all C, 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 C. Let's say Christian, no, I can make five, six of them. Christian church, culture club, community center. I'm anointed. Oh, my God. Where'd that come from? Woo, I didn't have that written down anywhere. C, 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 C. No, you need to be in the KOG. What's the kingdom? The kingdom is where Jesus is Lord and where he's advancing his program. And you've got to have some knowledge and information. Not this church club, Christian community center. Praise the Lord. Culture club. Keep praying. Who told you to stop praying? <laughs> Come on now. Work with me. Come on now. Come on now. C, 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 C. That's deep. That's deep right there. Oh, Lord, that's the Holy Ghost. I, I love this. I love coming to church. I get blessed myself. I hear things I never heard before. Nobody ever told me that. I don't think anybody ever told you that either. We're not mad at anybody. No problem, man. Everybody, do your thing. It's all right. It's a free world. Freedom of speech. You know, like Idi Amin said in Uganda, we can guarantee freedom of speech, but we can't guarantee freedom after speech. <laughs> Not good. Keep praying. Who told you to stop? You watching me right now, you better be speaking in tongues right now. Or if you don't have your prayer language yet, just say hallelujah, hallelujah, Holy Spirit, fill me. Give me the prayer language. Bring me closer to you, Lord. Let me submit my will to you. Let me become a true disciple. Jesus wasn't looking for just everybody to hang out with him. He was looking for disciples. They had to mold themselves. Jesus said in John 8.31, it's written in red, 8.31, if you continue in my word, then your disciples indeed, not noise, not culture, not religion, not system, not program, not this, not that, not man's agenda, not the headstrong guy in the front with the microphone. I'm not talking about myself, I'm talking about some other people. And they just have their vision, vision, passion, greed. It's all about them and what they have and what they do. Oh, all of that is, all of that is just going to be burned up in the fire. At the end of the day, when the day ends for you and me, the Lord's going to weigh up everything that we did that glorified him, that made us have a better life that made us serve him, that made us build the kingdom of God. Oh, I feel the anointing. That's what's going to stand at the end. So we need to be busy about that. And that's not from the songs we sing, how much we scream, how emotional we get, how much we see things based on our own, you know, with our own set of glasses on, our own life view or world view. No, it's the bigger thing. We need to break forth into that. Now, don't fail the test. When God comes to test you, don't fail the test. Don't fail the test. Don't fail the test. Don't. Let him mold you and shape you and make you. I have some notes here. I don't think I'm going to get to them at all. My Lord, this is great. This is the year of success, but success for what? Success for what? To do God's purpose. Jesus said even when he was 12 years old, he figured it out. He said, Mom, don't you know I'm supposed to be about my father's business? The apostles had anointing. That's why they said to the one who was lame, such as I have, give I unto thee. It's, and, and here's another thing. It's not that they didn't have money because they had treasuries. They were saying, I don't need to give you money. I got a revelation about that. The man at the gate, beautiful, that said, give me some, something. He said, they, they looked at him and said, look at you. You're here lame at the gate all these years. People have been giving you money. If I give you money, am I helping you? They said, hey, we, we're not going to say, they, they said silver and gold had they none. Maybe they didn't have it in their pocket, but it was back at the house. Lift your hands. It was maybe a little bit clever. Don't, don't tell me they were broke men. They weren't. You can't walk with God and be broke. Substance will come to you somehow. I tell you, when I get to the Red Seas of life, and I've been to several, God just pours out money to me. It just, I don't know even how it comes from. I just shake my head and say, my God, that was supernatural. 
When you're on the mission, God's going to provide. You're not going to lose. You're not going to be ashamed. You're not going to be embarrassed. You're not going to lack. You're not going to lose. Even if you have a tight moment, it's okay. God's about to come through with something on the other side. And ultimately, when you have a big, 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 huge vision from God, he's going to provide big, 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 big cash money, amen, for you to walk that thing out. It's going to happen. So they weren't broke. But they said, you don't need money, son. You need the healing power. Here it is. The man got up. He straightened his legs. Maybe they didn't work in a long time. He had to stretch his muscles a little bit. And he began to what? Leap and rejoice and dance and leap and praise God. He went with full strength in his legs because that was what he needed. But if the anointing wasn't there in the apostles, the disciples, how would it possibly happen? You know, you as a person that's trying to really serve in the kingdom, you don't have to come with a personal prayer request all the time. You should come and say, how can I do what you do? Not exactly what I do. You can't do that, probably. But, well, maybe if God deems it so, but... But you can pray for people that can get, get, get healed. You can teach people the word. You can raise people up. You can bring them somewhere they haven't been before. And then guess what? Say what? Guess what? When you flow in the things of God, the Lord will bless you. But that's not, that's not a means to the end only. It's a means to... I mean, that's not, I mean, the means of that is not the end in itself. It's a means to go somewhere further. Ephesians 6, 8 says, whatever good thing you do for another, the Lord will do for you. The golden rule that people know Jesus talked about, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. How many have done good to others and they haven't done good to you? How many have done good for other people and they really haven't done you right back? Yeah. So this Ephesians 6, 8 is not that. Ephesians 6, 8 is whatever you do good for another, whatever they do or not doesn't matter. The Lord will do it for you. The Lord himself took notes on what you were doing, and he's going to raise up people that will bless you, even unknown sources. You know, the sources and resources are everywhere in the world. If you can get God's attention enough by doing so much to serve him, oh my, he'll tap those resources and make sure they get to you. You want a new car? You want a new house? You want to do this? You want to do that? You want to travel here? You want to do this? You want to have this program? You want to have these people you want to have? He'll take care of that. Lift your hands. It's a good place to pray right now because I know that's what everybody wants anyway. Everybody wants something of increase in their life. But I'm telling you how to get it. It's a season of success. Success for what? Not just so we can wear flashy things and, you know, have some things that we consider ourselves prosperous. God, listen, let me, let me reiterate. I said it before. I'll say it again. Keep your hands up and receive this right now. The Lord has already provided that status for you. Now, I was preaching at Kampala a few days ago. The Lord gave me this, I think it was on the first night, New Year's Eve. The Lord gave me this emphasis from 1 Corinthians 2 9. It was astounding. Like, I've had the revelation before, but I saw it again in a deeper way. 1 Corinthians 2 9. Eye hasn't seen, ear hasn't heard, nor has it entered into the heart of a person how great the things are that God, watch this now, has already prepared for those who love him. You didn't get it, I should say it again. Oh, I need, my, I need my, my echo person with the mic. And then the Bible says, you know, some of these churches, you know, the preacher says, uh-huh, yeah, 1 Corinthians 2, 9, uh-huh, read. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that one of these days and take a drink of water and catch my breath. Praise the Lord. Can someone do it? Let's do it right now. Get a microphone. 
Read, son, daughter, read. <laughs> Give someone a microphone. Who has a good voice? You want to do it? You want to do it? Okay, give her the mic. Christine. Oh, you're coming around the back. Good, smart man. Okay, just go ahead. First Corinthians 2 9, you got it? On the phone. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor <coughs> have heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Let's read it again. Again. But as it is written, I has not heard. As I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. The things that God will prepare? Has prepared. Eh? Has prepared. Eh? Hmm? Has, has eh? prepared. Nairobi talk. Eh? Mm. Eh? Conversation. I listened to this one lady, she's like, eh, uh, uh. I said, each one, each one is a different word, you know? Eh, uh, uh, uh. It's like, wow, that's a language. Praise the Lord. I can learn that one. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. It's not as bad as like in South Africa when they click when they talk, you know? I don't quite understand that. Eye hasn't seen, ear hasn't heard. I went lower. What happened? Turn me up. Eye hasn't seen, ear hasn't heard, nor has it entered into the heart of the person yet. The great things that God has prepared for those who love him. Lift your hands. Nobody ever told me that before, I know. Probably not. I wish they had but I'm on the job here. God has already prepared them. Romans 8.28 says all things work together for good for those who are called by God according to his purpose. You see the word there, purpose? That's functionality in the thing that God's ordained. And if you're not there, no wonder you're struggling. Lift your hands. I want to pray and prophesy over people in this new year that they will catch the clarity from the mind of God on exactly what they need to be doing now. Nothing more, nothing less, but exactly what? Exactly what? The Lord has ordained. Smith Wigglesworth said, I found this meme and I posted it on my Facebook page. You'll find it there. He says, the greatest place is to be in the will of God. The greatest place to be in life is in the will of God. Because then things will happen at the right time, the right way, the right place. Provision, miracles, everything in the will of God. And remember the, uh, the one in Romans 12, I think, says, Prove that which is good, acceptable, and perfect. It's not like there's three different wills of God. There's really one. But the best one is the perfect one. Good, it could be good. It could be good like okay, like not bad. Acceptable can be something good also, but perfect, oh my. Lift your hands, say the perfect Another witness, please. Thank you, I will. Uh, Paul said, I press on to the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Not the low road, but the high road. On the high road, your life becomes high. High in what? High in pleasure. High in prosperity. High in favor. High in fruitfulness. High in purpose. High in open doors. High in productivity. Success incorporated. Your life becomes, oh my God. <laughs> Success Inc. Success comma INC period. Your life becomes when you're on the high road. 
Will you meet the devil along the way? Mm hmm. So what? He's already defeated. Will you have issues with looking at crazy people along the way? Uh huh. So what? They're defeated too. Lift your hands. I'm a winner, I'm a winner, I'm a winner. Jesus is the winner man. The winner man. Come on, sing it. The winner man. Jesus is the winner man. The winner man all the time. You know what I said years ago? It sounds a bit uh, uh, forward, yeah? But it's okay. And people say, like, God is good. You know what you say? God is good? Yeah, all the time. And all, you know how to say it, right? Like, like Kazuku. Kazuku said that. Parrots. I saw some beautiful parrots in Kampala yesterday, or the day before yesterday. Jesus. Gray parrots with, they have red feathers down here somewhere. Really cool. Like down at the bottom when they land, they got red at the bottom. God is amazing. He painted some things blue and red. There's some birds that have like red legs and then they're yellow and blue and green. Lord have mercy. Do you know what I found in Kampala? So, so like a parrot, a parrot can say it, can repeat it. You know, like you, you just say it because you heard it, you memorized it, you learned it. But you gotta get the depths of it. You gotta get into the depths of it. You have to get into the depths of it. Let's pray over that. The depths of the goodness of God. He's really great to those who are great toward him. You know, I can prove that in the scripture says, call upon me while I'm there and I'll, I'll, I'll do things. Call upon me and I'll answer you and show you great and mighty things that you don't know about yet. He calls things that are not as though they were already. The depth is, oh, here it is, here it is. To those that are pure, this is a scripture I was trying to get in my mind, I'll show myself pure, but to the untoward or the froward or the crooked, I'll show myself untoward, froward, and crooked. Not that God is crooked. Remember the time when, uh, back in the book of Kings, when they, uh, they wanted to hear a certain thing and the Lord let the prophets lie. I'm glad I don't live then. I don't lie. No lying spirit in me. No, no, sir, no, ma'am. I don't. I'm not into it. In fact, if it ever happened, I would be so mad. I would have a chat with the boss and say, please, Lord, could you have used those other guys? Those funny ducks that say they're prophets. Let them. But not me. Your own servant, your own oracle, your own voice. Not me. Thank God, I believe God would answer that prayer. Leave me out of the mix of that company. But they wanted to hear something else, so God let them hear something else. Remember the one that said, talk to the prophet Micaiah, and he said, is there going to be peace? He said, no. But the king won't want to hear this. So there was a place there where even the prophets told them the wrong thing based on what they wanted to hear. Look at Balaam. Balaam was paid to go and mess with people, and the donkey even kicked him, stopped him from being consumed, destroyed by the angels. The, the, don the donkey saw the angels ahead with the swords and the flames of fire were going to kill that Balaam. And they stopped, and he shook his head and said, I can't do anything against these people. Hallelujah. When you're in it to win it, you're in the real thing, things will be good. So here's what I said. People say, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Kazuku. Woo, woo, woo. Parrot, that's Swahili for parrot, you know, like parroting. I, I, I looked at someone one time, years ago I said this. It's a few minutes ago, a few minutes ago. And I said, yeah, he is, but are you good? <laughs> I'll let that one sink on you for a minute. Lift your hand and say, oh, my God. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. And they, were, they also disappeared. And I kind of went, oh. Maybe God was putting his finger on their life, saying, hey, you. In church, saying, God is good all the time, and I expect him to be good to me. But why should he? Does he have a good enough reason to bless you? 
Lift your hands, let's pray. Come on now, come on now. I have some nice notes here I could show you, some principles of success. And I thank God I'm anointed, I don't need the notes. The Lord can preach his own message. Are you getting anything out of this? What is it that God would say, I feel like I owe you a blessing, even though he's no man's debtor? I feel like, I feel like I want to bless you because you've been so good about my business. Oh my. Thank you, Jesus. I'm like that. Anything that comes to me, people even say, you deserve it. I do. Anything. Anything great, anything big, anything magnanimous. So I, I finally saw something phenomenal that I've always wanted to see my whole life. I wondered if I'd ever see them. And, uh, yesterday, yesterday, no, day before yesterday, I, I finally had the experience. A bunch of blue monkeys came up to me. Lift your hands, say it all the way. Blue monkeys. Blue monkeys. It's somebody wrote a song about it, I think, somewhere. Blue monkeys. They're really blue. I looked at some, they were brown and gray, and other ones were brown. Then you have the black ones, they weren't there. But, uh, and then the chimpanzees were there. They're black, you know, black hair, you know, funny things. And they go, ooh, 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 like that, you know. They only scream when they're fighting. I wanted to hear them screaming. You know when they scream with that shrill high voice? Ho! Oh! That's amazing. But they weren't fighting, they were kind of calm, so they just would go, Hoo, 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 once in a while, you know. And, uh, but these monkeys, they're blue. I have pictures. Uh, anyway, I, I thought we'd show a slideshow. I hope we can do it. Maybe I could show. Would you like to see some pictures of Uganda, the trip? Would you like to see that? Who would like to see that? Let me take a vote. You took a long time to raise your hand. Blessing canceled, no. <laughs> Took too long, sorry, you missed the moment. All right, we'll try, all right? I thought, I, they thought I could do it before, the, before this. I said, no, 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 I'm into, I have to bring the word of the Lord. I'm gonna be a fool with that other stuff afterwards. But you could see the blue monkeys, praise the Lord. There was even a place outside somewhere called the Blue Monkey. Somebody saw a blue monkey and named the hotel after it. Oh, hallelujah. What a place. God is awesome, and he has everything that you'd ever imagine you'd ever want. Lift your hands. A couple of keys. Your limitation is your own. Your, your limitation is your imagination. How much you can dream or think is your limitation. Sometimes later becomes never, so you need to do it now. Some keys of success here. Great things never come from your comfort zones. That's true. You have to push yourself out of your comfort zone. Another one, dream it, wish it, do it. Dream it, wish it, desire it, but do it. Success doesn't find you. You have to go out and get it. Say amen. The harder you work for something, the greater you'll feel when you achieve it. The harder you work for something, the greater you'll feel when you achieve it. It's the time to dream bigger and do bigger now. Don't stop when you're tired. Stop when you're done. Do everything today. Don't wait for tomorrow. I can post these notes later. If you can't write them, don't worry about it. Let's, let me read a few to you. Wake up with determination and get busy. You'll go to bed with satisfaction. Do something today that your future self will thank you for. Do something today that God will thank you for. That's right in line with what I'm saying, isn't it? Little things being done can also make a day big. Here's another one. Hard does not mean impossible. When you set your will and your mind to do something, it will be possible for you to accomplish it and achieve it. 
Don't wait for opportunity created. Oh, that's too much, isn't it? You create opportunity by, by preparing yourself. Like Lester Summer, I was telling you about, he was faithful in all the little things, and then when the big day came, when God was going to promote him, he was ready for it. David prepared himself for the little things, killed the lion and the bear. Then it was, when it was time to become the national hero and the blessed man in the nation by taking out Goliath, he was ready for it. And he did it. Lift your hands. He was ready. He was prepared by what he was already doing. When Abraham became the father of nations, he'd already been through a process. He left his people. He became the friend of God. He consecrated himself, made altars. And then the big day came and things happened. Moses, come on now. When he was out in the wilderness for 40 years, and then God said, now I'm going to have you lead the people out. He was ready to do it. He was prepared. I don't know what it is about people today or any day. They think they're just going to get everything for nothing. They do nothing. They do little. It's all about their own convenience, you know? How convenient it is for them to the level they want to push themselves. That's it. And they don't see the bigger picture where they should just fall down on the altar and cry and say, God, my life is yours. Lift your hands. My life is yours. My life is yours. It's like, whatever you require of me, I'm willing to pay that price. When you're tested, you think maybe it's to show you your weakness, but not really. It's also to discover your strength. Because in the process of a trial and a battle, you'll discover more about the greatness that's in you from God. The key to success is to focus on goals of things you want, not obstacles that are in the way. One thing you need to correct yourself on, if you're talking about negative situations, you've got to stop doing that. The entrance of your word gives light. Your light is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. It's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. How can a person cleanse his way? We don't need to be a wordless generation. We need to be a word-filled people. Because, you know, when the word is in you, my Lord, when the word is in you, you can overcome any challenge in life. Because you know what God said. Remember he said all things work together for good, not bad. And he said, I already have so much prepared for you more than you even imagined before. Lift your hands, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the touch of heaven. Something that's going to be released now to people to put fire in them to want to serve you, to want to give themselves to you. Lord, break every obstacle, distraction, debt, every wrong decision, every mistake. We pray you'll give people a second chance, a third chance if they need it, whatever. As long as their heart is racing toward you, that you'll help them and they'll learn from whatever experience they've had before, whatever mistake they've made, whatever wrong decision they've made, whatever, however they trusted a wrong person in their life. God, I thank you for the the Spirit of the Lord right now is moving to raise up soldiers, warriors, women warriors, men warriors, great servants of God, great people that are going to have resolve and strength and adaptability. They're going to be able to adapt themselves, humble themselves and say, you know what? I'm sorry, Lord. I don't know everything. I want to learn. I want to learn. People that want to learn, oh my, they can achieve anything. If you become a learner, you can have a great life. I know one man, he's a multi-millionaire. People ask him uh, when he'd be on an airplane, like, what do you do? They always say, what do you do? What do you do? You have a car? You know, yeah, they want to network. He said to them, I'm a learner. They look at him like, what? Meaning, oh, you're in the education business, right? You're a teacher, professor, or you have a college, or you're into, like, publishing or something like that, you're a learner. No, no, he says, no, I'm a learner. I do that for a living. I learn things. I learn and I teach. I learn and I teach. I teach and I learn. I learn and I teach. Every day, every day, every day. And the things you learn now take you 
to that new horizon and high place. That your life becomes a glory-filled enterprise. Oh, my. Somebody said, if you want to attract success, develop yourself, and success will come to you. Joshua 1.8 said that in the scripture. He said, meditate in my word day and night, and then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. You want success? You want more money? You want more opportunity? You want more business? You want to be elevated? You want the right people to connect to you? You want to be loved by the right people? You want to open doors to come to you? You want all that? Develop yourself. Because what's inside now becomes a magnetic force to put what's outside your way. One principle I learned, and I'll say this, you don't always get in life what you ask for, what you want, all the time, you don't. There was that song by the Rolling Stones, remember? You can't always get what you want. And that, that's kind of like how it is in the world, in the life. But you know what? You always get what you are. The level that you're at will always attract other things at that level. That's why it's important to surround yourself with good people. Somebody said, get with future people, not with past people. People that are part of your problem, you need to move away from them. And you need to connect with people that are part of the solution on a higher level. It's really up to you how you take your time and spend your time and invest your time in your daily life. You need to always be reaching up higher and then developing yourself. You ever feel like uh, insecure about meeting a high, high person? I, I knew what that was like years ago. I think, what am I going to say? What am I going to ask them? What am now I don't care. I don't care. I don't even care. I tell you, I'm just like, well, I, I, people look at me and marvel. Who are you? You're from Hollywood. You're from where? You're a rock star. You're a celebrity. You're a WWE wrestler. You're a, which flim did I see you in? The Indian people say to me. They shake their heads. I though I saw you, you're from Hollywood. I don't care. I'm me. I'm secure in who I am. Everywhere I go, I own the place. People say, somebody said, I was having a real warfare one day, and this person came up to me and said, you know, when you walked in, the whole atmosphere changed in the place. I was like, Whoa, thanks for the observation. That's encouraging, but I know it, but probably I needed to hear that right then because I was battling with a few issues. So when you walked in, the whole atmosphere, why? Because I'm a carrier of the glory. Why? Because hands were laid on me. Why? Because the Lord himself laid his hands on me. Why? Because I'm seeking him, connecting with him. I'm, I'm, I'm connecting with him. That's the ultimate master key to success, the connection with the Almighty. Lift your hands. It's, it's in my book, too. By the way, if you don't have this book, The Benefits of Excellence, I'm sowing this as my love gift to any partner who partners with the ministry on a good level. I will send you this book. I'll sign it for you. I'll do it here today in the, in the audience. And uh, if you don't have this yet, and for 2020, I want to challenge everybody to sow a seed with 20 in it. 2020 to sow for the new time of success, to sow a seed, to plant your seed. Those of you that are tithing, some that are traveling in faraway places, you'll send your tithe. Make sure you do it. You know how to reach me. And make sure you do your tithes. And, but I want to challenge everyone to do a, a, a 2020 seed, okay? And you may have another zero to add to that or want to subtract depending on the currency. It could be $200, 200 euros, 200 pounds, you know, 20, or it could be 2,020 shillings, 20,020, 200,020, it's okay. 2 million and 20 is not too big. There's nothing too big. There's only what you hear God tell you. And you push yourself to say, I want to sow for a harvest under this anointing. The presence of the Lord is moving here right now. One of the keys in this book, I talked about the, your connection to the Almighty. It has to be big and strong. Let me give you a little passage of scripture on that. Job 22, verses 21 to 28. Write that down. Job 22, 21 to 28. It says, Now, 
Return to the Almighty. In other words, maybe you knew him already to a degree, but you need to return and connect more with him. He said, and he'll give you peace. And then the prosperity will come. Even gold will be laid up as the dust on the ground for you. And there's more in there. You can read those verses. Acquaint yourself with him, and you'll be at peace. Thereby, you'll be at peace. And gold will be there for you, even as dust on the ground. Lift your hands. This walk with God is a prosperous walk. It's a flourishing walk. I'm totally into it. I've taken the vow to prosper, never to be poor. I'm not a poor man. Believe me, you're looking at a blessed man. I cannot be poor. I cannot be poor. It's not possible. It doesn't fit into, my, into the equation of my life because the Almighty is on me and in me and moving through me. And all of this substance and creative power and ability is flowing. This is the season for success, my friends. This is the season and the day and the hour for you to become extraordinarily successful. Close your eyes and just lift your hands and, enjoy, and take this right now. Extraordinarily, not ordinarily, extraordinarily, you know? Supernatural is a good word, super of the natural. It's not natural, it's supernatural. Like the highest level. Are you seeing that? Just words that we use all denote abundance, increase, breakthrough, prosper. They're all there. It's no poverty. God doesn't say, well, he's the God of lack. You know, if you serve him, you're going to suffer. Come on. You know, the Bible says you'll suffer in this world. There are verses on that. Suffering is a real thing. Oh, my. Because of the adversity that's in the world. Because of the devil that's in the world. Because of the evil that's in the world. You wrestle with so many things. That's what brings about suffering. God did not ordain it as your endless lot in life to be suffering like a fool. Now he wants it to be flourishing like a saint. My God. But you got to give yourself. You have to be diligent. You know, Proverbs 22, 29 says, see a person who's diligent, the same one. Somebody used to put these on the screen on my, my Facebook. I don't know where you went to. Please do that. And you that I see all the waves, all the hand glory signs or whatever, wave signs. Please write a comment where you're watching from. I want to know you if I don't. You know that thing that comes up like I'm here watching. It disappears unless you write a comment. So write a comment on the comment section. Write praise the Lord. I'm getting blessed. Thank you prophet. Thank you man of God. Thank you Dr. TM4. And uh, if you want to use M-Pesa in Kenya to sow a seed you can do it on 0792. Someone put that on the, on the Facebook feed. 0792320. I want to challenge everybody could be doing that. While the meeting is going on, I give you liberty to do that. You could do that. You could write praise the Lord. And all of you that are online with us right now, even if this is on YouTube, this video, write a comment in the comment section. Sign in and comment. Hit like. Hit the like button. Hit the share button. Do it on Facebook. We're on live on Facebook. Hit the share button. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Don't just be looking going, yeah, okay, great, amen. But bless other people with this. Many others need to hear this. And when you, when you spread the word, you're doing a work of an evangelist. Now you've done something now that God would want to bless you for. You've done something to help somebody else. Are you seeing that? Are you seeing that? Lift your hands. I've been around the world face to face with millions of people. We've seen so many miracles. We've seen it. I, I've seen it. I mean, I, I think I've already done enough for a lifetime, but I'm not nearly done. Sometimes I feel like I'm just getting started for another cycle of glory around the planet. Right where you're watching from, 
and say something good. The Lord. And share this with other people. Now you've done something to help somebody else. And the Lord can say, now I want to bless you for that. Always be doing things to help other people. That's a key to success. Always be doing something to help somebody else all the time. Do it painstakingly. Do it not looking to them to be a source of your blessing, but do it unto the Lord, and he will raise up someone to reward you. Sometimes people serve and serve and serve and do and do and do, and then it's only God that raises up somebody to be a blessing to them. That's a successful life when you have that transaction thing going on with God. It's working every hour of every day. Then guess what? You see your bills are paid. Your expenses are paid. You, you, your life is taken care of. You're, you're flourishing. Favor is coming to you from even unexpected and unknown sources. But the Lord's had you born to be an advancer of the kingdom. In the KOG, the kingdom of God. The nation that's outside of any nation. The kingdom without borders. The global thing. I'm American, but guess what? There's something better than being an American. I'm a global citizen in the 21st century church. Hallelujah. Go ahead. It's all right. Join in. It's all right. Look sleepy and half heart, half hearted. It's okay. I don't. I don't care. Can you give? Can you give the Lord a praise? I'm sitting there like this. Yeah, I know you. Can you give God some praise? You're in the house of God. Oh, hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. I don't have a CV to give you to help me with something. I'm already a millionaire. My job is with the boss, and he's already rained down blessings upon me. I'm way ahead of the game. Please understand that. I don't tell all my secrets and my testimonies. We never get out of here. The service would go until tomorrow if I started to testify of how good God's been to me. Don't worry about that. Lift your hands and pray. Come on, I need to get this, this thing switched on right here. People are the key. So winning the world to God, to bringing his revolution to mankind. And you can be a part of that. You yourself. You said me, just me. Yes, you, just you. Just you can lighten someone's world up. The world that you're in can be a better place to live just because you showed up there, because God was with you. Not just in faith and in like confession, kazuku confession, you know? Parroting it. No, because the power of the Holy Ghost is in you and something came on the scene when you showed up. God wants to anoint people. He's doing it in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you. I'm praying for you that fire from heaven comes to overshadow your life. And you learn to live a successful life by the actions that you're taking now to serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I'm Thomas Manta IV. Thank you for partnering with us in the world mission. I hope somebody's putting some information on the screen about that. PayPal.me forward sign Thomas Manta. Cash.me forward sign D dollar sign DR Thomas Manta. Website, www.thomasmanton.com. Somebody can put that up. My WhatsApp number, if you'd like to send me a WhatsApp, is plus 254-792-320-780. Plus 254-792-320-780. I'd love to get a WhatsApp message for you. Please don't ring because I'm probably in meetings. I don't know if I can always answer, but send me a text message with some pertinent details about you wanting to connect or you want me to pray for you or you want to say something or you want to open something up or do something. The Lord, 
can do it by the connection. Connection with the Almighty, connection with the anointing here. Partnership works by relationship. You know, the only way to have relationship is to be together. <laughs> That's so simple yet so deep. It's so, it's so simple, it's deep. The only way to have relationship is for you to be together. Lift your hands if you got it. Woo! I read that, I was like, man, I'm screen saving that one. Screen saver, screenshot. I'm screenshotting that one. Is it screenshotting? Is that correct? No, I'm screen shooting. I'm screen saving. I'm screen snapping. Whatever, how do you want to say it? I'm saving that one. The only way to have a relationship is to be together. There's no relationship without connection with God or with me or with the ministry or with the anointing or with anything. We have to be together. I'll tell you a testimony. There's a lady in the USA that said, I want a partner. I, want, I heard your, the verses you were saying prophetically about 111, Deuteronomy 111. I want to make you a thousand times more. And she said, I, I, I decided to become a monthly partner of $111 a month. And she's doing it on her card. It's automatically billed $111, which is like in Kenya shillings, 10,000, no, 11,000. 11,000 shillings a month. Automatic. Someone in Kenya needs to do that. And you could do 11111, you could do 2020 in honor of the year. Sow that seed. I'm going to pray over it. I'm going to pray over it. Something's going to happen for you. It's never happened before in your life. Increase in business, increase in income, promotion from the Lord, it's coming to people that flow in this order of connecting, in connection with the anointing, partnership, relationship, it causes blessing to come to you that wouldn't have happened any other way. It's tangible, it's real. And she wrote me back, I was uh, back from a trip, I wasn't even expecting such a message, and she wrote, I, I, right after I sowed that seed, someone gave us like $11,000 to pay our bills. Lift your hands. I was like, what? It just happened. I was not there. I didn't know. But their seed connected them with us. And they write all the time and com communicate and comment. They're probably watching right now. Bless you just happened just like that. This thing works. You have to connect. You have to connect. You have to do something. And the Lord wants to bless your life. Make it a successful enterprise for His glory. And I'm praying in this season that He's doing it for you. In Jesus' name. Love you much. Talk to you on the next broadcast.